The most popular sport for children to play recreationally in the U.S. and certainly around the world is soccer. So what about soccer and the brain? What about soccer and CTE? Well, concussions account for about 22% of soccer injuries. They're second only to leg injuries in terms of, the brain is second only to the legs in terms of regions of the body that are susceptible to soccer injuries. But it's usually not the case that the concussion is caused by headers, as you might expect. Rather, the concussions are caused by player-to-player -player contact, head-to-head -head contact, foot-to-head. In fact, the most susceptible soccer players are the goalies, who are constantly being run into by other players. They're actually the most susceptible to concussions. What about headers? These have been studied now and suggest that at a professional level, um, a pro player might perform six to seven headers per game, up to 800 in a professional uh, season. The average speed of the ball when they head the ball is under 65 kilometers per hour, and the acceleration is under 10 Gs. Now, just to put this in perspective, concussion usually occurs at 40 Gs or less. So the headers are occurring, causing significantly less acceleration, deceleration than would typically cause a concussion. So I wish I could tell you that we can conclude from that that soccer is entirely safe, since I played a lot of soccer and my children play soccer. However, there have been now a number of reports of professional soccer players who at autopsy have been found to have CTE. This is a report from Leah Grinberg, one of our colleagues, who performed a brain autopsy on Bellini, a very famous Brazilian player, won the World Cup with Pelé in 1958 and 1962 very known especially for his headers. And here you see the now very familiar brown dots and spots indicative of CTE in the brain.